But here we are on the Isle of Lewis in the Outer Hebrides. Wonderful place to be again. Much more rugged even than the west coast of Scotland where I've already shown you on video. And I hope to explore in a few days just around the coastal areas of the island, um, do a little bit of demonstrating for the local art society and do some mixed media work again. We'll do some watercolour, we'll do some oil painting um, and we'll do a little bit of pastel work as well. From this video then I hope to link on to go, taking a trip to Portugal. Portugal again very very different, we'll have the red roofs, the white cottages, those lovely pan tiles and the blue Mediterranean, quite different to the more dour landscape here on the island. The houses here being grey and more concrete and uh, not a bad place for using a limited palette these islands, just the browns and the greys. Today we've got a little bit of sunshine and we'll try and work in between on these sunshiny days. So let's, while the weather's good, Let's go make hay while the sun signs, as they say, and we'll go and try and do some painting in some of the harbours and the rocky inlets and all sorts of lovely wild places here on these outer islands. tip of the island. A rather grey dour day again but uh, pleasant this time and not too cold and very little wind which is pleasant as well. So I'm going to work in quite a limited palette, a watercolour on uh, knot paper, a fairly small one, of, of a few boats up on their cradles looking out over the harbour here and the little cottage on top. Um, we'll work our way down from the sky and then uh, into the boats and so on probably concentrating on uh, some details of the boats and uh, salient points of the house and so on and painting fairly loose around it in this case. Just a light constructional drawing at first to uh, feel my way and get the scale of the things. And then I'll paint in more care and detail as I go on on some of the parts of this, like I say, this house I'm doing now, a little bit more detail perhaps, and uh, the boats. But most of the rest I want to keep fairly light and free. Anyway, just where I'm going to go. So I'm going to put some masking fluid onto the white boat here and one or two other little lighter areas on the white ropes here for instance. Um, just come down through that boat there because it's so fine, I won't put them in with gouache afterwards. Uh, and then I'm going to come in with the sky, get all that completed, come down to these details and areas of the boat and then very, when I've got all of those tighter areas done, very loosely paint around the outside. So I'm hoping to finish this painting in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, depending how long these details take. And apply it with this um, clay shaper again and I've got a, a thin point and a broader point so I can just get the gum at the end and bring these little bits of light rope through which I can rub out later for these very fine light areas. Just a little bit on this end of this boat here as well. And uh, I'll leave these bits because I'm not too worried about um, the big bit of white here. I'll just put a few, a few little bits in there. But I will do over here, I will do this um, white dinghy. And you can see I can use the flatter edge of the blade now. And what I'll do is just put a few of the little bits of reflection of the boat going on underneath as well. And it comes out in rather nice little ripples of white under there. I'm going to wet the colours first so that they'll come off nice and easily with my brush because they haven't been used for a while. I'm using tube paint, Winsor & Newton artist watercolour. You should always use the best in watercolour. Never use the students if you can help it. Always the artists. 
doesn't matter so much in um, oils or even acrylics to a degree, but it does in watercolour. I really want the best. Right, I shall uh, put a very thin layer of um, yellow ochre on first. No, in fact, I won't. I'll use raw sienna. I'll use raw sienna because it's slightly more transparent. And then I'm going to work my colours up over it. So, working from the top downwards with a nice big oval wash brush. I could give the entire paper a wash or even use a tinted paper for this today because the light is so grey that it wouldn't really... But the idea is to keep the whole thing nice and wet for the moment so that I can drop in these darker greys of the sky and a little bit of the blue just to give a... come right down to that horizon line and I think I'll just come through the to the boat as well. I'll just come down to the concrete wall there. There we are, that's got my sky nice and wet. Now I can drop colour into it, a little bit of tissue and lift out a smidgens of a lovely cerulean blue line that is going along the back there. It's very soft light and I'm going to drop into that bit of the cerulean blue. nice and delicately. But remember that your watercolour always dries a little bit lighter than when you put it on. So I'll let that just gently blend in back there, nice and pale. Put it in nice and fresh. If you mess about with it too much it's going to turn a slightly greeny colour, so I'm going to put it in on that clean paper and let it softly blend down there. Now let's come to those stronger colours and we'll start to make up this purpley blue grey of the of the sky. I'm going to use some burnt sienna. A little bit of more yellow ochre. It's a little bit more um, raw ochre and a tad of ultramarine to that. And a, a wee touch of, of purple, just a small touch. And we'll start off up here and just tickle the sky in. That's still fairly warm at the moment because I want to warm the sky at the top here. You see I'm leaving the light areas in between and letting the paint flood down gradually. So I want all my warmer colours up here. And I'm painting on the vertical so I know my paint's going to run downwards. That's fine. It's fine with me. I'm going to go a bit more to the purple. Purple, a little bit of. Now we're dropping wet into wet, so what we don't want to do is get too much water. If you get too much water on this into your paint, it just dissolves into a nasty mess. So just enough pigment to tint the colour underneath and not run too much downwards. We'll pick it up if it does, and just give that lovely delicate purple tint coming through these clouds here. And I should get stronger as I go along, but I don't want it running down through, I'm better almost to be painting on a flat on this, I don't want it running down through my sky here, so I'm going to pick up any little bits of it lifting down there. So it would be easier for me by far to be painting on the flat for this particular one, but in this situation, I don't have that luxury. So gradually dropping in these cool tones in the background and letting them trickle down the paper. A little bit darker behind that. And now I'll bring those tones, the purple and the blue, more up into here and stronger because they will soften back later. And I can get these lovely soft furry effects as the paint. Now we've got to do this before the paper gets any drier because if we don't we're going to get cauliflower in. We mustn't put paint on as the paper's just starting to dry or you'll get a nasty, smudgy, blurry cauliflower going on there. So I've used my cooler purples here now. That was ultramarine and a little bit of mauve purple. Now I'm going slightly warmer with them up here. And I'll add a tad more burnt sienna. Just a little, just to warm the, the purple higher up. It seems a bit drastic at first, but you can see we're getting these lovely effects now of the soft grey light coming down amongst these clouds. The 
the soft island light, grey blue, and tickle the thing, Tom. Just tickle it in here. I put the darks against the lights now gradually, getting a bit stronger with my colours. That sky's about there, a little bit more cobalt I feel, ultramarine, I'm going to, a little bit more ultramarine up here, I want a little bit more blue in these bits of sky here, just to pick the warms out there too, let them trickle on down, and that sky's okay, and I'm getting pins and needles on my left foot. Now we'll let that dry a bit, while that sky's drying, it's damp enough here for me just to use the same purple put that roof in on that building back there, just softly, and indicate a few of the, while it's still down, indicate a few of the um, windows there. And I'll let it dry off and tidy that up later. But my masking fluid is now dry down here. We mustn't paint over it until the masking fluid is dry. A nice cool yellow into the sandy areas and round the back here. and. Uh, then bring the warmer yellows in again afterwards. I'll bring that blue over that in a minute. Because there is this cooler underlying yellow going on. So it'll give me a nice base for dropping in wet into wet over the top. I'm going to start doing some more detailed work on the boats in a minute as well. Down into here. And let it spread itself nicely amongst there. through here and I'll drop in some burnt sienna into there shortly because it's the peat has come down into this bit of fresh water here and it's really giving a lovely rich texture to that water. That can wait for a moment. And that's quite a dark mixture of the um, raw sienna and a little touch of ultramarine. shadows in in a moment. Let's just get the basic tones down of that thin. And under this boat as well here. That will keep bringing these worms out when we need them. Texturing with a brush, this warmer sienna. So it's playing with the consistency of the paint. It's knowing how wet your paint is to be able to come in here and, and do this job before it's too dry. And we'll use this burnt sienna to go right back up into here. And the darker area behind here of shadow between the stanchions of that boat trailer as the underneath of that boat comes up and we'll just flick out a few of the lines under that boat get the feeling of the As I've said so often before we have to watch out for the amounts of blues in the greens and there's a lot more blues going on than you might think amongst these greens here. So I'm going to get hold of some cobalt blue now. Come in with some cobalt blue into these greens and look how that changes the, the, the appearance of the, the greens that we've already put on. It makes them look 
a lot warmer because this is a lot cooler. So cobalt blue now amongst my greens that I've dropped in, so they blend in bit by bit. And I'll go a bit stronger with the, the greens again in a moment. A nice patch of grass down here that's a lot more warm. Bring that one up. Bring it up here. And we'll put some of those blues back into the distance because we know that the distance has got to be bluer. Make them a little bit stronger. Bring them on here. Especially on the horizon line there where it's a darker horizon against the sky. To tidy up some of these edges. And I've decided I'll put a little bit more warm in still. So a little bit more burnt sienna. And we'll go even warmer with the brown greens here. Which will make this light yellow sand appear lighter still. Gradually getting darker and darker with our tints. There we go. Now a little bit more strong, a bit more pigment. And there's also the same blue over the top here. that a bit later as well and put a bit more colour into that. And while I've got that dark let's look at some of these darker areas of the grass, the textures here at the edges. I think we ought to come back to that water, it's, it's dry enough to, well it's still wet there, so it's a very damp atmosphere so it's, it's taken quite a while to get things to, to actually dry off for me. Some really nice darks going on in the black rocks in the background here. Coming under that jetty. I'll just start to pick that jetty out a bit. Let's look at that cadmium orange on there now. I'll just mix a bit at the side of the paper. Put a bit along here and then drop some rose into it and it gives us that much lighter orangey, orangey red. I'm almost ready to take the masking fluid off now actually as well. The shadows underneath the boat here. Maybe a little bit around the windows on the boat too. And the far side of the boat also. Leaves of that over there to warm it up. And we'll 
come back to the ultramarine again. And we want to get this rubbing straight in. It should be dry enough now to put a bit more detail on there. And coming underneath this as well. And darken there yet again along this top edge. Gradually getting darker, not too quickly. Let's gradually build up our Darks there. And there's quite a deep blue line along here just to separate that bit out. And you see the form starting to take shape more now. Soften that back. A bit deeper purple and deeper blues into some of these areas here. And down underneath shadowed edges. Now we'll take this masking fluid off and we can see these light areas that we need for that white boat. I can touch up and around in a minute. Make sure your paint is really dry before you do this. You can see the white ropes coming out there now that I had as well. I think I've got a little bit here somewhere. Like this, there we are. So, I just need to come back in with a small brush here. Indicate a few of these. It's a clinker again. You'll do it. Now there's the work to do here on the stanchions here. And that one comes down at a slight angle there. Let's look at the darkness and the shadow of the blue on here a bit. Because when I've got that cobalt on the go, we can put in some more shading on the boat itself. Now we need to be doing these bits. I'm going to mix again a bit of burnt sienna and the ultramarine. To give me a, a warm dark. It should be alright for... Make the plate into a brush. You see I've got a point there. But the point, if you turn it sideways, has been made into a blade. So I could use the thin bit of the blade to paint in these bits of radio mast. You don't have to paint it all in great detail, just a few marks and lines and indications. That's all we need. Now we can always make a, a round point of a brush into a blade so we can get an even thinner bit. If I do that, you see how the brush is now going into a very thin blade. It's wide that way and thin that way. So for painting thin rigging, if you haven't got a rigging brush with you, that's quite a nice idea, and then you can paint with the edge of that blade. We're going to use a flat now to put in some of the looser brushwork around here. It's still fairly wet there, actually, but it does need some more warm reflections putting in. So I'll just use the flat of the brush to drop them in. And even up into the, the bank here, there's still quite a bit of warm. It's now nice to get back and do a bit of good brushwork. Move. 
a road coming in there, down there. Really enjoy ourselves with some of this colour now. That move coming in under here. Grass work. You see how just loosening up a bit at the end of it all is helping to pull it together. You can be tight on many of the areas, but you do really want to keep it nice and fresh and loose. So we can come back around these tighter areas now and just totally loosen up. And there we are. I think that's okay. I think we'll finish it now, otherwise we're going to be over in danger of overworking things. A little, a few little darks here on top I'll just put in. Working on 140 pound Arches hot press paper. This has been coated with some acrylic ink in deep blue and purple and takes the pastel very well. And you can see I'm working then from the horizon outwards with my mid tones and then gradually towards my lights and darks.
As you can see, I've removed the paper from the pastels. I find this much more comfortable and easier and far more versatile. Some pastels just crumble when you take the paper off, but I find these unisons don't, and it allows me to work with more versatility. I can use them flat, sideways, scumble, any angle I want. mountain stream high in the glens here on the island. I'm not sure whether I'm going to um, have a lot of rain coming shortly but I'll have a go at an oil painting for you. I'll we'll try and do another one tomorrow. This is my second to last day. Tomorrow on our way back down to Harris and I'm going to try a big beach scene. We've already done, as you've seen, a nice big uh, pastel um, over the moorland. So here we have a, a lovely uh, little trout stream coming down from the mountains. Doing a 20-30 oil quite rapidly. 
try and start up with um, the brush work. I may finish with a little bit of palette knife work as well, the painting knife work. We'll see on that. Anyway, I'm going to start with the rigger and uh, it's a bit of ultramarine blue and just sketch in my basics and then work very, very rapidly with my flat nylon brushes. completely. I've got to give up for the moment and I'll try and finish this painting off either tomorrow morning or back at the studio. But that's the importance of taking shots and having backup studies and sketches and photographs to continue with, as I'm about to do now. But the weather changes so fast in places like this, you have to paint fast. Colour study, well I'm going to use pastel and water only to do a fast study to go with the oil painting. But the weather's so bad on and off, if I use the photographs of the study from here, I should be able to finish the painting later. That should do it. I know. see we're getting there this is just the pastel and water and blending it in and I've actually been sitting here painting in in the rain as it's pouring down you get some wonderful effects and it's great to be here working into this really marvelous environment I'm getting a bit wet but hell I'm enjoying it
to show you some new ways of working that you will go away and say, let's try that. You're not going to move forward unless you take a risk. You have to take risks to learn new things. The, the two problems I find with adult students coming to me, the first one is they were told when they were 14 that they were never good at school. And the amount of bad primary teachers we must have had when we were younger. So I've got to give them confidence back as a teacher. The second thing is education. I want to pay like constable. And they might naturally be a money. And I as a teacher have to bring out of you who you naturally are, not make you into me. And that's not what I'm going to do tonight. I'm not going to say this is the way to paint. People seem to think you're going to come and do that. And I'll give you a, a very fun example. All the instruments in Lord of the Rings, and it's a local word over there, it's in D. A pretty little thing. So that was rather fun. And I'm meeting artists and craftsmen all the time in so many walks of life. And when I was there, there were woodcarvers there, and they were using chainsaws to do pieces of carving out of entire trees. And it was wonderful to see the work they were doing. And this is where we go on to the diversities of work. I won't go on playing those, but I've got various instruments from, you know, America and all sorts of different terms are picked up. But it's this diversity I want to show. It's a deep woodland scene. Uh, not that you have any trees over here, but you want something very stark and dark. Or, say, a snow scene where something's dark against it. These are great. And in that case, I would use probably from snow scene um, a knot paper. Here I'm using 140 uh, hot press, a smooth paper, because I want a fairly smooth effect. So I'm working in quite heavily with this at the beginning just to get my darks established. And it means that I can put these acrylic inks over. Now the acrylic inks are much stronger than watercolours. And quite useful, but some, I mean, some of the contemporary work I've seen here by, by some wonderful artists already, um, they're using watercolour very, very strongly, but I wonder whether they've actually tried these acrylic inks because they really are rather lovely. But I use most of all is this larger one. And you've got to get used to these because it's so easy to overdo it. And if you do one, two, three squirts, two minutes later, not then, your painting goes down the front. So a couple of squirts, and watch what it does. And I can't really go wrong. I'm just going to make this up as I go along. I can't really go wrong because I know I can put things back in again. That's the beauty of it. So highlights, darks, anything else. What I would normally do is put my darkest midtones in at this stage and then work the real darks and the lights back in later. But you can work either way around with it, as you want. Where are we? Just some nice deep. So some actually really nice dark, strong colours here to get my... Just get some lovely background. I noticed you started in the middle. I did with this because I wanted this very dark to be. I let them trickle down a bit of fun. It's going to seem quite weird to you working in this way at first, I know. You think, oh God, what a mess. But maybe it will be in the end. Hopefully there will be something out of it for you. I don't mind if it goes right through the house. Thank you.
are again, last painting on the island, beautiful sandy bay on the uh, island of Harris and uh, we've got a nicer morning this morning to try and oil. I've only got two hours before we've got to get back to the ferry so I've got to try and do this 24-30 canvas in two hours. That's going to take some work and some speed. We'll have a bit of fun and we'll give it a try. My last chance here for a bit. Let's go for it now, shall we?
So the sky first, and I'll put some uh, raw sienna on, a nice gentle wash of raw sienna first of all. All the way down to the mountain tops. So I'm going to just dab away an area here so the light shines onto the mountains. A little bit of uh, cobalt blue there. Just gently soften it in. I want these layers of almost rainy cloud coming in as if we've got some snow and uh, rain coming into there. I'll we'll let that just feather down, just trickle down. It'll be very dark up in there. I'll bring that back up to here as well. Some of that comes It's quite misty coming down into there, so I've got to make that quite a misty area anyway. So while I'm at it, I softer think, uh, bits of mist and cloud there. There's an area there inside the cloud that shows a bit more. Down we come again, letting that stronger colour go up into that softer one there. And along the edge of the bank here. darken that side because I want to pull the eye into the middle more where the light is. And that mist comes through there, right down through that cloud. There we go, a bit dark around the cloud to bring him out. There we go. And we've got some rock coming right down through into here and a sort of stream there pouring down behind the, the building. Let's bring some of these darker areas down through behind this cloud here as well. We've got the ultramarine and sienna. And let's put in the top of that roof. I don't need to paint too carefully actually because I've already got the masking fluid there, but we'll just put it in as a nice dark purple, which is the sienna and the ultramarine. There we go. That roof will show out well against the foreground, so it's light against dark, cool against warm, rough against we've always got all these textures on the go. Right, leaving that, back to my big wash brush, and let's look at the foreground. Now there's these areas here which are a bluey grey, and we know our bluey grey, it's the ultramarine and again a little touch of the uh, burnt sienna again. And we'll just flick those in, and while they're still wet then we'll come straight back in with the um, yellow ochre and sienna again in a minute. Little areas of rocks around the front and these bluer, cooler areas. And where I want the rocks a little bit lighter, I'll go back and just dab out the odd little piece of light from amongst them. Just dab that out, look, and it leaves these little bits of white amongst the lighter blue. PT dying autumn grasses of these, of the, uh, there we are, it's almost there, look, in one go. I want to go even yet stronger still, so I'm going to take a bit more of that warm and a touch of the, just a touch of the ultramarine and I want to come in with some of these warmer areas here, the darker areas on the peat. Just tickle those in and look how that brings that forward. Now we've got the stronger colours in the foreground, so we've got warm, cooler, cooler. The sky is quite strong. To lead us in even more, now look how that works, the red, the warmer here leading our eye in, look. So we're almost down to a, a pure burnt sienna in some of these places now. And we'll come right into there with that sienna. We'll drop into the darks even and, and work our way through in the foreground here, putting them back into there so that they just gradually disappear back in there. Thin them down a bit. 
and through all the shadowed bits of snow. Some of those are cooler and some of them are warmer. That come down there. Now this area here is going to take a little bit of working on. It's a bit darker in places. And we're ready to rub off the masking fluid on the house, so I'll just take my handkerchief. It should be dry enough here, yes it is now. I'll we'll take away those bits of masking fluid to show the white again. A bit of luck. There we go. That's it. I've got to come in very carefully there now with a small round. I just want to pick out the darks and that, so a little bit more ultramarine, a little bit bluer this time. I'm just going to come around to the roof there, darken it a fraction on that edge. I don't like being too detailed but a little bit's fun just to indicate what's going on here, those two little windows. And then again here that's the same. We've got our wee building. We've come to that bit of tree I did earlier and we can touch a little bit more into there, just a fraction as well. Just like that. Now, this side of the building is just tinted down slightly. Let's make sure I've got this light enough. Just want to, to tint down the shadow on there. Through here. That's it, just to give it a little less flatness. Into there, that's it, that's called the little house. I could use a flat for this, but I've decided to use this oval mop for this job this time. Just a few bits of... Just dragging the brush around a bit here in the foreground to give the effects of some distant darks and some of the details in the foreground. Just touching here and there, look. Just to bring the eye forward. And that's about enough, we don't need much more. We'll just a little bit more there, a little bit more here.
These with water as well, so what I'm saying is, I'll, I'll, I'll do it up here just to film, but if I can have the water up there, now I can come in with a plastic and use it just like water can. Yeah. Take with it. Oh, right. so, a bit like those Yes, I've seen that. So I can take with yeah. it now. You say these are very heavy, thick pastels. Let's say I had something dark. And I had a tree coming up or something like that. Now, I can put it in as firmly as I can. I can take the brush and I can draw it out and actually paint with it straight onto the... So you've got that, that versatility of... Um, these are Unisons. They're the only ones I really, really recommend. They are so nice. Oh, and they're made handmade in Yorkshire, you know, these. Well, they will be on the best ones. Yeah. That's so, why so, they can make it for so you. We can come back now. If I wanted to flick extra figures in, I'll put lights and darks in. Now I can come in and do just that. I can put his hat in here. Um, there's a bit of colour here and there. Uh, even, even though... So if I did that, mine would end up just looking like... 
something like the yeah. patchwork. Yeah. I could have worked like a market at all. Just keep it as loose even when working with this. I mean, that, that, that'll do for a quick study, won't it? Just to show the atmosphere. Yeah. Great. Here we are on the west coast of Portugal now, a great deal of difference between here and the Hebrides. We've got some sunshine, although we have had weather worse than the Hebrides for the past few days, although it is winter here. But a beautiful turquoise sea and huge breakers coming in. I'm rather a long way back here, but from this angle I can get some of the greens and turquoises. I can see them better with the sun shining through the waves than I can closer up.
As you can see here, although I intended doing just a plain watercolour, I finished up having the choice of being able to use other mediums as well. Being able to use a bit of white gouache and liven up the surf was most useful and gave it quite a freshness. And as the painting went on I realised that I was going to need to use a little bit of pastel, especially at the very end, where two figures suddenly came into the picture, into the scene, and stood there long enough for me to feel that I could sketch and draw them in as they were. I felt they made quite a good focal and centre point. I think this is one of the main points I'm trying to make in this part of the video is that you can choose the medium to suit the picture that you're doing. You can choose the medium for the moment, the mood, the surface, the atmosphere and you can enjoy that medium for the purpose you're using it for. If it's a very dour Scottish sky then a dour Scottish watercolour would be nice, wet into wet. If it's a very bright floral scene uh, then maybe you need acrylic inks and pastels. In this case a nice light lively surf with loose watercolour brush strokes and then built up a bit for strength with pastel at the end seem to be the ideal way. But this gives you the choice to work as you want when you want. You are the person who is in control not the painting. The painting may lead you, it may guide you, you may flow in and out, weave in and out with it. Your idea is one minute, then the painting forcing you to do something else the next. Maybe the painting's going wrong and you've got to fight and bring it back again. Nothing ever goes that easily, does it? I mean, we all know that watercolour is like a battle. It's like something you have to plan ahead of time and uh, gradually work on. But even then, things are going to surprise you. And as with any battle, I had a chance to choose my weapons, not only the paint, but the brushes. you notice when I first set up my um, tools, paints, easel, that I got my brushes out and made a choice of, I nearly needed three actually. I needed a flat, the wash brush and one small round brush. And this painting was done entirely with those three brushes.
Well, here we are at Silves. Nice little street scene to have a go at. The sun's coming in and out with the cloud, but we'll have a, a bit of fun on this one, I think. I'm going to do a fairly accurate drawing and then a very loose watercolour. Hopefully I'll get a figure coming down the street at some stage to just put into here. I'd like a figure in the middle of this, um, of this street coming down towards me if I can find one. But uh, what I'll do is work out the basic composition first, wait for the figure, and then very loosely paint in, um, paint in the tighter areas first of all, if there's a figure there, uh, and, and some of these areas like the lamp and the flowers and so on here. Um, but then the rest of the scene painting very loosely. I'm going to do the areas I'm going to concentrate on now. I've just put a small figure into the distance where I want her, uh, and I, there's a blue car just reappeared. And the blue car and the figure, and then up here I want to concentrate on some of the lamp area, uh, and some of the detail around here on the, on the bike. The rest I want to treat fairly loosely. Warms and cools there, different blues. I'm going to go from cerulean to cobalt. Just want to indicate him, I don't want to go into too much detail on the car. A little bit more warmer yellow in there, a little bit of cadmium orange, and then we've got the red light, which I'll just drop a little bit of rose into the cadmium orange to give it that lovely bit of red, orangey red there, nice and loose. Soften that down a bit, come back to the tyre.
the reflections, soft wet into wet reflections into the glass work a little bit there. Let those dry off before I go into more detail there. I'll come back up to this little lamp over here, he's quite light as well. Just tint that down a bit. These pinks here, are going to be needed. We'll look at those now before I start painting in the foliage on there. A little bit too strong, thin them down a bit. Put our bright colours in, our light and bright colours in first. And keep it lovely and, and loose all the way through if I can. Nice feeling of light there. It's a little bit stronger on those greens. And then down here we've got to indicate those Plant pots, I only want to do an indication. I want to leave a sort of vignette around this area.
got a little bit of flooding going on around there, but that's what we want us to... Lift out a bit of that there. And it's coming over. I don't want it. Back up. Just soften down through that. Now, what about this colour in the background here? I can just bring a little bit of that yellow into there, just tint it in a bit. Just give the atmosphere. Do the same here. I want to come back to these rooms up here.
Oi, ó só, tá o tem o número do filho? É a mesma coisa, o gato pergunta ao filho. Certifico. Well, this will be the last picture I do uh, on this little trip to Portugal. I'm going to do a, a quick pastel over a deep blue acrylic ink. These lovely little white buildings I've been looking for. Um, until now, it's been rather too modern for my liking. But this, on the more northern part of the coast, um, is, is far more traditional. And though it's a dull day, I think I'm going to have a go at these quite complicated little buildings. But I rather love the shapes and the, the hills behind. So we'll make this the last picture and have a bit of fun, shall we? Got to build up. Now, a few of those darks just coming over the top. Even though it's a very chunky pastel, you can still use the, the pointy bits of it to get the details and texturing you want. Right up through here, and how that dark shows nicely against there. And I'll put a bit more of that in later, I don't want to do too many of these details. So you see we're building up the, the light blue, the pinks and the creams, depending on how the light's shining on these little buildings. And all I'm doing is the walls at the moment and little details of chimneys and things. And we're getting the feeling of the whole jigsaw, one piece to another. The thing is to choose the medium also to suit the subject you're doing. There's a video firm talking to me a couple of years ago. Um, they were negotiating on my doing a video for them. And they wanted me to do just an intermediate watercolour. And I was a bit wary of that because it's okay just doing pure watercolour, but I like to feel free to be able to use the mediums that I want, either together or on their own, for the subject as it affects me when I'm actually there. So although I could plan to go and do this all in watercolour, it's rather nice today to be free enough to use this medium, where I'm working pastel over a paint. Quite possibly be done very well in watercolour. Right, now we're going to use some colours for the roofs. I reckon our yellow ochre and this lovely flesh tint which is quite a strong one and a bit of um, bright orange should do it. We'll start off with the dullest colour and just see where the duller roofs are. I'm going to have to put a few more colours in as I go along because there are some more orangey reds as well. Some more umbers amongst some of the slot. But some of these are not too bright, these roofs. They just went subtly marking in the road going through there.
hand tiles down the bottom here, the pig styes. Now come on to the brighter orange and just subtly bring in. Look at that now, that pushes that back. Let's come back over here and have a look at that. I'm going to need some even redder colours over here yet. Um, that's that soft one here, then there's a more orangey roof up here. We've established our lighter warms, now let's get into some darker ones, the deeper browns here and the cadmium reds. Don't want to be overdone on the houses, but some of the reds on the houses are a little more, a little warmer than this um, orange, so I'm just going to touch in a little bit of red here and there, not too much, just to give that bit more richness down amongst some of these areas there, for instance, those two little stripes there. Just a little bit more to give a lovely glow of all these jewels of, of warm and cool colours we've got working down. So let's have a look at this house here for a start. We just put the little art windows in. This is a very, very deep blue I'm using. And that immediately turns it into a house. So down here, just indicate little spots of pure colour in these windows. To do this seed head, this one that almost looks like a tree that comes up through here, it comes right up from one of the cacti that's grown. Flax plants tend to do this. Um, they have a lovely flower that comes up and turns into these almost tree like spikes. And a little bit of yellow into that as well, at the bottom there, to bring it forward. How those spikes come off. Downwards like this. Now then they go quite now if I take a dart then back up into here, a dark that's much blacker and warmer than the background, and just flick these seed heads in. I should be able to get them standing, really standing out and forward. I need a little bit of purple in them yet because this black's a little bit too black for this job. But I can build up these seed heads coming ahead of this so that the eye is led back to those hills. See how much darker this black is than the surrounding hills, and that's going to push it push the hills back. And I say we'll add a little bit of warm and purple to these as well because they're a bit too dead as they are on the paper now, but it's giving you an idea. Now if I, if I come back on those, I'll just put these colours down. I come back on those with the deep blue up here. You see a little bit of colour gives it life. I don't I don't use pure black over that.
Well I think that'll do then. This is the end of our little trip to Portugal for the moment and we'll link this now with the other film from the um, Hebrides and two totally different areas even though we've had some quite, quite grey weather here as well. Uh, another very enjoyable experience and a, certainly a place I want to come back to and paint again. And I hope you enjoy the, the work that I've been doing and the different ways of working and the way that I've shown you you can use different mediums together and choosing the medium for the moment. Bye for now then. I'm going to try this rather nice bit of beach here uh, with some very white uh, buildings against a darker blue background and this time rather than using watercolours I'm going to use the acrylic ink for the blue sky which is a bit stronger and really gives some intense blue uh, to, get to work against these whiter buildings and beach. I'll start off there by turning the um, drawing upside down, very basic drawing, very light drawing just to get them started but I've got the horizon there, the silhouette there and let the uh, watercolour flow that way rather than coming down into here this time. I'm going to wet the paper first with a slight tint of the blue in my brush so I know where I've gone against the buildings. And then some quite strong acrylic ink on and let it gently wash down from the horizon. See, it's quite a strong colour. I do want a strong colour this time. It's nice and gently coming down here. I want to also keep some of these edges. So we really get some intenseness of this blue. Got a left handed there. take too long this painting, I don't want it to become too laboured. Thin the ink down a little more again and on we come down and now we'll get stronger with the, with the ink, more pure. It's a wonderful coat of deep blue coming down. which will all run down towards the top of the paper this time rather than the other way. If I wanted to I could always put some pastel over this to soften it but I, I don't, really don't want to. What I will do though is I'm going to add a little bit of um, rose to the ink, a little bit of watercolour rose just to warm up the top of the sky here a bit more. It'll take quite a bit because it's quite Strong, strong dark for this anyway. And 
fact I'm even going to put a bit of alizarin in there because it needs to be so much stronger. Just let that blend downwards. And this air is going to dry very quickly, I have a feeling. So that can possibly go even darker still yet. Towards the top here. With the ink, let it dry a little more. Put a, another coat down here just to strengthen even more. I really want an intenseness in this colour. And then we'll reverse it round and let it drop back again. See the strength of blue we've got with the acrylic ink. Now while the ink's drying and I've got it the other way up I might as well start on the beach area. I want fairly intense colours today so perhaps normally I'd go for a, a raw sienna here or yellow ochre but this time I want to use stronger colours so I'm actually going to go for a bit of chrome yellow and um, some cadmium yellow and really get the feeling of this warm beach. Or should I say attempt to get the feeling of this warm beach. And if I make this as warm as this then I've got to make the other warms warmer as well in a moment. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. But look at this lovely feeling of sunlight we're getting already with that intense strong blue. Now, where the sea is, I'm going to use watercolour. I'm going to start with cerulean. Trying to keep it as pure as I can. It's a bit too much water, but use much stronger colours today. Put into that with the cerulean right up to the horizon. It shouldn't move now it's drying. into here on the beach. A bit of sand showing through there. Some bits of white on the wave edges. Now then I've got to go a bit stronger because there's a really deep area of blue up here hitting the sky and it's much deeper than the sky is so if I've got to go darker still let's see if I can mix up some fairly strong ultramarine. I don't know the ultramarine, but possibly a wee bit of purple as well, because it really is quite dark up there. Don't make it too thin. I'm going to go darker still later on that bit. Let's feel our way along these waves. And now we'll come back to these areas on the beach while that's just drying off a little. It's running too much so I'll remove a bit. A lighter area of water coming across there. So I'll lift that out with the brush. Look at these more golden colours here now. I really want a strong watercolour today. Nice strident colours.
white fence posts down here that I'll just paint in between and leave them. I won't be bothering with messing about with um, masking fluid today. I just want to get straight into it. So we'll leave these little bits of white fence post. Some of the buildings, nice orangey roofs. Let's get those in straight away. Establish some lovely colours here this morning. And back into the beach too. Let's get some of these warms going on the beach as well. And where the footprints are down here in the sand, there's a lovely sort of mauvey colour. Play with these colours, really find them, really push them. Rooftops back here. Lovely, glorious way to work. I find these purple colours coming up in the beach too. Now then, having talked about purple colours, let's come back to that ultramarine. See if I can go a little bit stronger with it. The ultramarine and the rose. Because it still needs to be darker up here against the sky. Can't keep a steady hand. A bit greener. A little bit of green coming down to the waves. Yeah, quite dark. Play these really darks against the, the lights to make it shine. And the same up here with these greens and purples against the, the weeds and the rocks here. Talking about those greens, because if we play purple and yellow together, we're going to get the opposites in the colour circle. In the same way as the green and the red. So let's play some of these shadows of the footprints coming back here. And some of these shadows of the trees up here as well. It's lovely little palm trees. Going up here. We'll put some of the lighter colours in there in a moment because I've left plenty of space. Lots of white being left, you'll notice. Right, back into that. It's got slightly warmer now. And we'll add a little bit of. Um, light red. Strengthen these colours up yet again. I really do want to get some nice strong colour here. Morning, even though it's a watercolour. People seem to think watercolour is so insipid and pale, but you can get quite strong colours, look. Of course I can use my pastel to get even brighter colours, but this morning I just want the purity and the lightness of watercolour. Keep the brushwork nice and loose as well.
Now a bit of deep purple to start to pick out these footprints in the sand, the purple against the yellow. You see how that nice rose that I put in earlier now becomes lighter with these footprints going in. Some darker purple down there as well. Let's really throw these strong shadows out because we've got this strong sunlight against the, the dark this morning. how much bleeding occurs down here. Not too much, just enough to give it that freedom. And we'll carry on with the footprints going the distance. I'll come back in there with a little bit more detail later. So it's just running too much wetting to wet at the moment so I won't get any further with that just there. Just tickle in some of these shadows. Well, we're all almost ready to go onto the buildings now, and rather than use my mop, which I've been using up until now, painting square things, it makes a bit of sense to use some square brushes, doesn't it? So let's have a little go with the square brushes now. the size of the square brushes too. Uh, it's a nice warm blue that, um, an intermediate one. I'm going to see what happens with the uh, the cobalt blue, which is my intermediate blue. Remember we have cerulean, cobalt and then ultramarine. Yes, that, that cobalt's quite nice there. We'll, we'll just play some of the buildings in with that. Maybe, maybe a fraction warmer in places. Let's have a look at the, I think it's just going to be cool, cool uh, shadows, but it's not. There's some quite warm shadows in there as well. In fact, I'm going to use a little bit of the, the rose again to find some of these shadows. There's some archways here and there. You can use the flat of that brush to get those archways in. So the tip of the edge of the, the blade of the brush there. We'll just leave these whites behind glowing the pure white paper. Just showing out here. We've got some of these warmer reflected shadows in, then we'll come back to the cool ones again, I think. Let's come back to the cool ones again now with the cobalt. Not be too dark quite light reflected areas. It's too dark that one, I'll just bring it back a bit. Lovely little archways in there to pick out in a minute. Some of those are almost in a green shadow. There's also some very bright yellows in there. 
Um, let's take the little, little brush and just come back to my chrome yellow because there's some very bright yellows coming in here, look. Which then will make this softer as well. You can see now why I want it to be so much stronger with the colour. My gorgeous butterfly just went past. The stronger I make this colour, the, the brighter the feeling of the sunshine here. Bring some of this yellow into the waves too. And also I think a bit more down there. Because you know how much lighter watercolour dries as it as it dries out, it becomes much lighter. And we want a nice feeling of strength here, the strength of colour, the vibrancy of colour. Bring some of these warms in here again as well. Foreground. And now I can play a little bit more in the background there as well. A bit drier now. And some of that light red and a little bit of chat it down with a bit of burnt sienna because some of these roofs up here are quite dark. And these flat roofs coming along. Look at the beauty of these darks against the lights now. I'm using almost pure colour in some of this now. As I said earlier about using the medium for what you want to say, I want to say how vibrant this place is, but I also want to enjoy the watercolour still. So, we'll play these lights against darks, we'll play these hard against smooths, bring this beach out, look, give it some life. Palm trees down here we'll start to find now. That beautiful butterfly again. What is he doing? There's a slight tint of cream. Now, if I'm going to play with the cream, I'm going to be very, very light. I don't want to be ruining my colour. So a little bit of aureole in yellow into here. And look how delicate that makes the the yellows and the creams. Just a little touch here and there. Not too much, but how much more delicate that aureolin is than uh, the chrome around it. Now then, the greens. We've got a little bit of green going on. It's quite a light green. So I'm going to use my aureolin and a little touch of the cerulean. I'll we'll just flip in some of the greens in the background here with these bits of grass. Burgess. And also those greens come into some of the trees. Touch now of the sap green, if I can get it right. Let's give a bit more yellow. More yellow in that, uh, try some yellow and viridian, that might be us better. So we've got the aureolin and viridian, a little touch of cerulean, just, just to give it that brightness there. Some of that will be coming down into the reflections here as well. 
Now coming back to reflections, talking about reflections, let's go back to that green again and the waves of the sea. Because there's quite a strong green here coming along these waves. I don't want it blending in now. Not only that, but it's quite a strong dark amongst them. As the waves curl over. So we'll get this feeling of the Mediterranean Sea here. Something with the reflections going on. We've almost finished painting in minutes. I'll just come in with my small brush in a moment. First I just want to come back on some of these shadows. Shadow there, for instance, at the end of this block. Maybe a little bluer, so we'll add a little more the cobalt into that. Now let's strengthen up some of these shadows in the roofs and cool areas here. Some quite strong darks in there. Take a little bit of indigo. Let's have a look at some of these darks around the towers up here and the rooftops. Again, I can afford to be quite strong with the colour to really get these shadows and the windows and so on working. Tree in between there. Some trees coming down there. Look how that works, that's beautiful look. I even surprise myself at times. Go on, Peter, go for it. Unless you take risks, unless you experiment, where are you going to get? Look at these lovely darks we can place amongst these lights to really make this stand out. Some darker trees in there. Some nice archway up in here. Some more archways down there. Another one over here. Shadows in there, the window against the dark against the light, the tree growing there. little bits of window and we come down to the trees a bit lower down and I'm going to make it a slightly warmer. Let's hit the um, you know, a little bit of burnt sienna now and the indigo and we'll just Try and get some of these palms in a bit better. A little bit of detail here, I think. Just these little railings along here might be nice just to flick in. Not overdo it, just an indication of them. A 
bit of detail here in the foreground just to lead the eye in perhaps. And it looks like a busy little um, town. Got more windows in these blocks here, we'll just flick some of those in. I don't want to do too much more actually because I don't want it to become overworked. I don't want it to become an illustration, just painting about the atmosphere and light today, which you can get in watercolour like this. Look at some of these palm trees back here. I just couldn't resist doing this painting this morning. I was going to finish on the pastel yesterday that we did of the little white houses on a dollar day, but see the light has changed so much today, it's felt it's irresistible to have a go at it. The figure down here, we'll just put that figure in, I think. The child is in.
this sound a good me sound. Uh, what do we got there? Blue. <laughs> Shit. <laughs>